Hello, I heard you want to run SQLite on your React Native application. So I'm here to give you an introduction into OP SQLite, uh, talk about some of the benefits, some of the drawbacks, comparing it with other tools, um, and then doing some very simple uh, installation of the package. So I'm just going to start talking about what are the main differences compared to other libraries then we're going to install the package and then we're going to talk about some high level topics so the first thing about opsqlite and what's the motivation behind it is basically uh getting to run as fast as possible right so a lot of the libraries in the last year or so have migrated to the jsi which already gave a big performance boost compared to the last generation of uh, SQLite libraries that were available for React Native. And um, you can see here Quick SQLite, which was the previous version that I also created compared to Expo SQLite with the newest version. They're more or less on the same level. Um, then you also have MMKV, which is not uh, SQLite storage, but just uh, write into disk strings as fast as possible, uh, which also performs amazing to my surprise. And then uh, comes OP SQLite, which um, gain a lot of performance boost because of uh, sharing some of the memory with the native side of things. So that was kind of the main motivation, um, getting it to run as fast as possible. So before I start getting into the high level topics, I would just like to install it and show you how easy that is. So I'm just going to start with a expo project that I have initialized here. Uh, let me just put things into place. So this is just a brand new expo project, nothing on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the dependency first. And this is just going to be on the JavaScript side. Now, since we're running this on iOS, we also need to do a pod install. But before I do that, um, there are many ways to configure SQLite. Um, and SQLite is super malleable, uh, especially because it allows to run extensions, compile native extensions. And these extensions are very, very useful from full text search, um, geo tagging all this other kind of stuff so actually uh, there's some very nice features of op sqlite that you can use for example you can choose to use sql cipher which is a fork of the original sqlite that actually encrypts the database on runtime so all of your database is encrypted so in case you have some really hard security requirements we can, OPSQLite can switch the sources for you and use this fork. Um, it has some runtime cost, but it's not super high. Uh, so that's very, very nice. There are also ways, uh, there are some extensions package for you, for example, uh, full text search. You can also enable that. Um, you can also use on iOS uh, the phone version. That, that means you don't compile anything, you don't embed anything in your app. So this will save some megabytes of your final bundle, but uh, we'll use the phone version. Uh, the disadvantage of the phone version is that it's not under your control. So if you're running this in an uh, older iOS version, you may not get the same SQLite version that you're expecting. Uh, there are many ways to, uh, to configure this, uh, more extensions, so you can take a look into those in the documentation. Here are some of the flags. Uh, but for now, let's say I want to use SQL Cypher. So I will just configure that. And then I will just do a simple pod install. And then everything will be taken care of for you. So here you can see there is some output. It's going to tell you it's going to use SQL Cypher. Uh, in order to use that, it needs to install OpenSSL for you. So this is very nice because it also allows you to have very reproducible builds where you can check this into your uh, Git repo, see when something has changed. Um, so it's very, very nice indeed. So now all I'm going to do is do the iOS command again. So hopefully that will just recompile the entire application. Okay, so the app has recompiled. That was fairly fast. 
And now what I can do is just, I can just, um, does it import? No, it doesn't import. I would just import the open function from op SQLite. Uh, the entire library is typed, you don't need to worry too much about it. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to create a database. Uh, I don't want to go too deep into the API right now, but basically I just pass the name of my database. Since I'm using SQL Cypher, I also need an encryption key. So for now, very unsafe, don't do this in production. Just passing this um, here. Then once the database is open, I will just execute a couple of functions. So there are also async APIs for you. Uh, these are promises, but for all our intents and purposes, this is all I need. And so if I load my app again, okay, I don't see nothing, but I can do results and I can be like, I want to execute. Yeah, well, I have inserted then I can have a query result where I will just select from my user. So this is Copilot doing funny stuff, but then I can just do console warn my query result. So here you can see I got something back, right? So it's very easy. So what are the main benefits of using OP SQLite? So first of all, like I showed you before, you can really configure it. You can swap the SQL implementation. You can uh, run some uh, extensions very easily. You can turn down some performance flags which might, might not be available in other modules. Um, you can pass your own compilation flags if you really want to get down to that very deep level. Uh, the API is also fairly extensive. Uh, besides the normal execute functions, you have some other APIs that allow you to do a large amount of SQL operations in just one, one go that that will save some time. Um, you can use prepared statements. You can save some time doing um, raw execution so it doesn't return objects. You can attach more databases. You can load exten extensions. Um, you can also use hooks. So you can see all the, all the API and the documentation. Um, but let's say um, I want to talk a little bit about what's the main benefit compared to other libraries, or let's say to an ORM. So compared to an ORM, um, why would you want to use a raw SQLite library? So the good things about ORMs is that they save you work, right? Like they abstract all the SQLite or the SQL queries complexity from you and give you some type safety. The problem that a lot of ORMs run into eventually, or you will run eventually, is that there are abstractions on top of the database engine. And this works quite fine as long as your application might be small, at least in my experience. But at some point, you kind of reach the limits of the ORM. So sometimes you might want to go beyond, you know, simple filtering and sorting, but actually doing some complex operations, some subquerying. And the problem with the ORMs is that um, they fall short at this point, right? Because each abstraction that you put in it uh, on the top of the SQLite layer uh, brings some complexity. Uh, some operations are not possible. Depending on the ORM you're using, um, they might not even be doing something like native functionality. Like they might be joining your tables on the ORM layer, which will be expensive and slow. Um, and some of, especially some of the features, nat native features of the imp particular implementation you're using, right? For example, in SQLite, if you're using an extension, they will not be available on the ORM, not always. Um, just because there are abstractions on top of many um, database layers, right? So that's the business model that the, the people who create these tools are in. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of value. Um, it's just a hard fact. So um, at some point, there is a lot of benefits of writing raw SQL, right? Like um, you may not notice it at first, but by doing or offloading all the work that you can do into the SQL layer, um, you will be getting the most performance possible out of the database. Um, now, compared to other tools, for example, MMKV, 
MNKV is not a database implementation. And um, I, s I have seen a lot of people who stringify their entire state of the application into MMKV and they just put it in there and compared to previous alternatives, of course, it, it's a lot faster. Um, but it doesn't give you any of the guarantees that an actual ACID database does, right? So it doesn't have rollbacks, it doesn't have uh, protections against, um, you know, if the device powers down, if your application goes down, um, this kind of stuff. <clears throat> so, um, of course, it will be faster when dealing with smaller stuff. If you just write a string into the database, you can get SQLite to be as close as possible, but it's not going to go as close. That's just the hard fact of it. But it also doesn't give you a lot of the nicer stuff, which is, you know, sorting on native code, filtering, um, doing more complex operations, applying some logic when you're trying to retrieve the data from your database. So it's definitely a very good alternative, but it just depends on the scale uh, of the problem you're trying to solve, right? If you just want to put some strings on the, the, on the disk, then more than fine. Um, but you probably want to use a database for more structured data. Uh, compared with uh, Expo SQLite, uh, React Native S uh, Quick SQLite, they do the same at the end of the day. Um, but I have seen a lot of people who are now starting to run real large data sets on their mobile devices, on their applications. Um, so sometimes you really need the computing power at the end of the day. And this is where OPSQLite uh, excels. So that kind of gives you a very nice benefit future proofing um, regarding your data layer. So that's it for now. This is a very high level introduction to the package. And maybe on later videos, I can go over some of the extensions, um, what are the possibilities about the API, what are nice. Um, some very interesting topics are possible. You can build reactive systems now on top of it. Um, so yeah, looking forward to hearing, to seeing, giving you more information about it. Take care.